What would happen if you never leave your starting town in Kenshi? A question still unanswered by even the greatest of philosophers. Today I attempt to survive without ever leaving the town of Heft. Stop right there. Unable to make money the usual way, I have to seize every opportunity to get where I want to be. In the biggest house of Heft. This is the Kenshi One Town Challenge. Our star of the show is Towny. As a hiver he was once birthed by the Hive Queen. But due to screwing something up pretty bad, he now faces a lifetime of confinement in Heft. Heft itself is a city inside the Great Desert region. There's all kinds of shops, two bars and the whole town is guarded by Empire Guards and Empire Police. Who will utterly destroy you whenever you do something wrong and throw you in jail for a ridiculous amount of time. To begin with, the city is surrounded by skimmers. Occasionally they approach the city gates, engaging in battles with the gate guards. Upon dying they are known to ascend into the cosmos and on very rare occasions they end up within the city walls of Heft. The chance of this happening is kinda low, but when it does happen, Tawny can seize the opportunity to scavenge meat and teeth, making him a few cats in the process. As a second money making possibility, Tawny could start stealing. However, Tawny is kinda stupid and he couldn't even hide from a deaf, blind and crippled bone dog. So before attempting any thievery, Tawny must first dedicate time to practice and improve his stealth abilities. And he has enough time to do that, while shuttling between the two city gates to scrounge for dead skimmers. What a great game. After some back and forthing, he found the first dead skimmer. He ripped out his fangs and intestines to sell at the local bar. Who the f even buys this sh Anyway, hivers are giga chats that eat putrid meat. So he kept some of those and sold the rest of the goodies for 570 cats. The upcoming grind sends shivers down Towny's spine. There had to be a faster way to get money. He was locked in this city and he felt justified to share his suffering with the other citizens. And so he ventured out during the night to knock an unsuspecting villager unconscious. He missed on the first hit, but because Kenshi is a buggy masterpiece, the guy was stuck in his stool. This allowed Towny to get some more hits in, until his target fell on the floor unconscious. With his pockets now filled with stolen goods and his assassination skill leveled up quite a bit, Towny visited the bar to fence the stolen goods. But the barkeep had at least one more brain cell than Towny and saw that the goods were stolen and kicked his ass. He got pretty beaten up and was crawling to the other bar to buy some bandages when he got arrested and jailed. The police was kind enough to gangbang, uh, to, to patch him up. His time in jail wasn't ill spent. By picking the locks of his shackles and his cage, he practiced his lock picking skills. When he finally managed to open them, he jumped into another cage to do exactly the same, for even more skill practice. The second time he got caught doing it and was now locked for 67 hours. And then it hit me. The hell is the Usually you would now escape the prison during the night and leave the city until your bounty wears off. See what I'm getting at? We can't leave the city. Now we have to fulfill the whole sentence of 76 hours. Not gonna lie, I just left my PC running and went AFK. After having lunch, I came back to my PC and knew that I had to be a lot more careful. We couldn't risk going into jail, because the jail time was just so crazy long. So Towny set his focus on looting skimmers. What a beautiful gameplay experience. After far too much time and desecrating bug corpses, he finally made enough money to buy his first house. The small shack wasn't much, but it was the first step to progression. Then I found the thief fence that roams town, but he only gives 50% of the value of the stolen items. He's even more of a ripoff than Maxis is with The Sims 4. But Towny knew from the old legends that when he was able to make the fabled item furnace and put the stolen goods in, they would come out unstolen. Now, people wouldn't even recognize the heirloom sword that grandfather gave them on his deathbed. You know, I want you to have this as well. And he could then just sell them in the shops for full price. For the item furnace, you need a research bench level 2. So after buying some clothing, he went out to buy the required research books and did some thinking at the thinking table. And I didn't expect the level 2 research bench to be this big. We need a bigger house first. Go Towny, get some more insect meat and knock some people out for loot. And yeah, watch out for the guards. The next couple of days was Grindtopial galore. The next residential building to fit the research bench level 2 was 13k. That's a lot of dead skimmers and stolen t-shirts. And sleepovers. The grind did make us able to level the assassination skill pretty well. Making Towny able to take down increasingly stronger enemies with great weapons and armor to sell. After grinding even more, it finally happened. Towny got his second home and look at how big it is. This could easily fit the tier 2 research bench. 
Tawny jumped straight into the research, built the bench and then started researching the item furnace. And it cannot be built inside of another building. It can only be built inside player colonies. You know, those things that you build outside of town where we cannot get. Okay, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Well, that was some research and time wasted. Luckily, Towny remembered another old legend about laundering with the help of different storage chests. The weapons cabinet and the armor storage. And yes, this did seem to work. Put the stolen item in and... Ta-da! Freshly laundered items come out. No one will know that it was once stolen. It's not stolen! And we can sell them at full price at any vendor. This was a great money maker. Townie spent the nights crawling around town knocking people down. Because he had been walking in stealth from the moment he started his adventure in heft, his stealth skill was now pretty high already. And knocking people out was getting easier and easier. The cabinets were filling up quite well. With every weapon and armor sold, he was one step closer to his goal of buying the big juicy clubhouse. But this was not enough for Townie. His mind grew greedy and his heart grew noxious. One night, while knocking down yet another guard, he came up with a cruel plan. The next morning he jumped behind his research table and started researching wind energy, needed for the tier 3 research bench, which was in turn needed for the imprisonment research. Because why not also capture the people you just knocked out anyway? Tawny wanted to turn one of them into a slave to assist him in his sinister endeavors. And with a little bit of help of modding, it'd make it even more profitable, making them recruitable and easier to sell. But for some reason, they didn't really seem to like Tawny. Huh, how could that be? And they didn't want to join him. Tawny decided he wanted a slave nevertheless, so he went to the local slave trader and bought some of them their freedom. And after buying three of them, one decided to join his cause. Welcome Starvey. However, there were still two of them following him around, which was kinda annoying. I managed to sell one of them back to the slave trader. Sorry, but I couldn't sell Night Dog back. And I also couldn't put him in a cage nor kill him. So I did what every sensible town dweller would do and got us into a big fight with the local authorities. Townie himself got locked up for another 70 hours, but we did get rid of Night Dog. During his time in jail, Townie started to think, was this what he had become? Is this really what life should be like? Having a drink with your townies during the day, after which you knock them out the same night, stealing all of their clothing and take them hostage to sell them into slavery? What have I become? This town. It has made him a monster. Is this what the Hive Queen had in mind for him? The first thing he did when coming back home from prison is release Starvey from her shackles. Somehow she voluntarily chose to stay with him. She was now also cursed, not able to leave Heft. Tawny thought long and hard about what he could do with his life. And then he knew it. He knew by chance that a lot of people in Heft had lost their clothing. He used the last of his money to buy some more research books, researched armor crafting and built a leather working station. In there he started creating traders leathers. From leather that Starvey kept buying from the general stores. She used her backpack and just bought everything that came in stock. The first armor pieces that he made were junk. But slowly he was getting better at it. Starvey also tried to make some different things to make some cats. She tried to get into sake making. Which was kinda profitable, doubling the money input every time you made a bottle of sake. But after a few days of grinding away at the leatherworking station, Townie got better and faster at making the trader's leathers. And their quality was becoming better and better. I just bought a ton of resources with Starvey and she kept auto-refilling. So I just left my PC running and when I came back... Oopsie, kinda forgot about you guys. Well, doesn't matter, we're gonna move house anyway. After some more real-life hours of grinding, Townie made enough high-grade leathers to sell. Making enough money to buy the biggest house in Heft. Man, what a freaking grind this was. Leveling the leatherworking literally took 3 to 4 hours. It was crazy. Well, this was the Kenshi One Town Challenge. It was kind of a struggle for our friend Townie, but he did it. He made his dream a reality. With the help of Starvey, of course. And while you're still here, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and why not check out the next video? Bye.